The Premier League is the biggest and most exciting league in world football and Sorare is the best football game ever invented. So you can imagine my excitement when Sorare announced a new winter competition that would be exclusively for the Premier League fixtures where they're going to be giving away half a million dollars. Sorare is global fantasy football and sometimes the global aspect of the game does put new players off. They just want to come in, play in a meaningful competition with just the Premier League cards and teams that they know and watch every single game week. And starting on match day 13 of the Premier League are the 25th of November. Running up to the 22nd of December, they're going to be giving away half a million pound every week. What I mean by that is every week they give money away. And all in total, it adds up to half a million dollars. They'll be paying it out in pounds. They'll be paying it out in euros, dollars, whatever your native currency is. So there is a global game. This thing is played absolutely everywhere. But what Sorare are doing, they're not just giving out money, but they're allowing multi-entry. So this is a revolutionary tournament for Sorare that does really change the landscape of how competitions are on the platform. And I think this is going to be a huge sign of things to come. Whenever Sorare do new competitions, I'm always really excited to do a video, breaking it open, explaining to you what can be won, where is it won, and what are you going to need to do it, as well as dropping in some of the experience I've got from playing this game with some pro tips and hacks. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly the team I would be building for multi-entry three teams into the Premier League half a million pound giveaway competition. At any point in the video, if you laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, please do like and subscribe to the channel. It really does support everything we do here and it would help me get to our goal, which is 10,000 subscribers. If you're brand new to so rare and you haven't even opened up your account yet, there's a link in the description of this video that's going to discount your first purchase up to 50%, up to $20, 20 pound, 20 euro, wherever your currency is. It's the best way to sign up. It's the way everyone signs up. And if you don't get a discount on your first card, you're, you know, you're worse off for it. By clicking on that link, you support me and all the content here at the channel. So I thank you in advance if you do so. If you do get stuck, if you need any questions answered, jump into the comment section down below. And yeah, guys. Let's just get stuck straight into it. Now, one of the things I love about this is it doesn't matter if you're finding this on the 25th of November before that or the middle of December or whatever. The money, the competition, it runs every weekend individually. So if you miss the first weekend, you're not missed out. You can still get involved and you can still partake. Over the entire period of the competition, for limited cards, which are very nominally priced, your average kind of Premier League player, you're talking about a 20, 30 pound, 40 dollar card, something like that. They're giving away 13 and a half thousand pounds every game week. For the rare cards, which are a good bit more expensive, around £100-£150 a card, they're giving away £20,000. And for the super rares and the uniques, the very, very, you know, they cost thousands of pounds, these cards are giving away a wee bit less, but there's less people playing up there. Thousands of pounds again. And it's a significant prize pool. Obviously, you would expect the majority of the money be at the top spots of the leaderboard, but with competitions like this, one thing that often puts me off from entering is that if you finish in a really crap position, but it's still in amongst the top percentages, you don't really get anything for it. But up to the top 800 places here, they're paying something out, which I think is a fantastic prize pot to, to run with for cards that are very cheap and very affordable. I think it scales well into the rare section of the game as well. 150 spots are getting paid out here with the majority of the, the really good prizes obviously paid up at the very top. Less is more in a roundabout way when it comes to the super rares and with the uniques. Now, there's a few different strategies. There's a few different elements at play in this that we need to address right at the beginning of the video so we can kind of carry them as little threads throughout okay now this tournament runs individual game weeks so unlike other so rare tournaments that are run over a longer period of time your scores don't get aggregated it's not your best four scores or anything like that it's just literally survival of the fittest on an individual weekend how high can you finish and how much money does that pay out and because this allows multi-entry this is going to give people a real fork in the road do you use your multi-entry to stack up on one team cover cover a couple of variables for who does get the starting position or who does like accelerate in the match and really score off big or do you use your multi-entry to cover a few different teams a few different games where i expect these three teams should all do well i'll pick a team for each of them and then hopefully you know one of them really does ignite maybe two of them go off maybe all three of them could go off that's then possible now, one of the most important details to add on top of that is that this is a cap 270 competition. So rare value every player on their form over the last 15 matches on the so rare scoring matrix, which runs 0 to 100. So whatever their form has been over the last 15 games, that's their value.
value. That's a moving value. So as the competition moves on, players will play matches and their values will change. So you have to be agile to be able to, you know, still get in under the cap. For a cap of 270 points, typically you can get one star in your team. If you can get someone who has a very low L15 value because maybe they've been injured or a sub recently when that's uncharacteristic, maybe you could squeeze two in. But getting more than that is just not possible. So you will really need to pick and choose your battles for who you think could be your captain, could be the stud of the team that really helps you kick on. In this division, you also get XP added onto it as well. If you need an explainer on more of the Sorare basics, linked up in the top of the screen now is my new Sorare Start Here playlist that breaks down all the fundamentals that you need to know. But with XP in particular at the moment, we've got this crazy thing called Collection Bonus. And because this competition is centered around you having new season 3D Premier League cards, Collection Bonus is going to play a big part on the top parts of the leaderboard. So it is going to be unavoidable to stack teams in this division. Because it is the Premier League, there is only 20 clubs for a start. But even beyond that, because it is multi-entry, you will be getting Collection Bonus added in for virtually everyone is playing this tournament because they'll be picking up multiple people from multiple clubs and multiple positions. So you do need to factor in what level of collection bonus should you be trying to get to and what can you get to. And then the third and final thing is you need to evaluate the fixtures. Like I mentioned in the intro, this starts on match day 13 of the Premier League, which is the 25th of November and runs to the 22nd of December. Now there is some notable uh, omissions from this. Crystal Palace versus Brighton on the 12th of December. And then there's some other games that have been rescheduled until later in the month, until later December, later January. So make sure you check an updated fixture list. But you need to check the fixtures over this time period and work out, you know, what fixtures you want to try and take advantage of, what players might be viable, etc, etc. Now on this channel, I'm actually a big admirer of Brentford. I really like what they've became in the Premier League. I really like what they're about. And I like from a surreal perspective what you get from their players. When we look at the Brentford fixture list between the competition is starting and ending, They've got, for me, a lot of very favourable fixtures. The ones that jump out, of course, will be Luton and Sheffield United there. But also, for me, playing Aston Villa, Brighton and Arsenal in this window of the season is probably the best time to play them. They're at the sharp end of qualifications for group stages of Champions League, Europa Conference League and Europa League, I think, all three of them respectively. So when Brentford are going to be playing them, they will have split attention. Some of them have a rotating squad, some of them have some injuries and that kind of thing on the go as well. So I think Brentford's whole slate here you can play a lot of their cards very feasibly. Mark Flecken is, of course, an outstanding goalkeeper choice. And as far as general goalkeepers go on so rare. He is amongst one of the best points per pound. I'm a big, big, big fan of him. Ethan Pinnock is nailed on to play like every single game and a very, very regular scorer and a guy that you can rely upon. You can build a foundation of a team around and a defender that across all of those fixtures, I could see him scoring very, very well on the so rare scoring matrix. Now, Matthias Jensen for me is probably one of the most undervalued good points per pound players in the Premier League on so rare. As you can see so far this season, he has been a consistent 60 plus scorer and for a guy in midfield, to isn't that glamorous takes some set pieces yeah but has a clear defined role in this Brentford team I think these scores quite repeatable and along with Flecken and Pinnock and Brian and Buemo I think that the Brentford team has got a fantastic spine at the moment not just for this Premier League competition but so rare in general a lot of these guys like I say the way Brentford play the reason I admire them is they're very repeatable they're very tactical they play the individual fixtures they maximise the strengths of their individual squad and I think those four players there would be the four of the first players that I would bring in for this competition. Now, Crystal Palace have probably got the most inviting opening fixture of this playing away to Luton. But if you look across the whole piece here of the tournament, they also play two home games to Liverpool and Brighton, which won't be easy. Brighton being a derby. Being away at West Ham and Chelsea in London, Palace generally do quite well away in London. So these five fixtures here, Palace are not travelling too far. You do need to throw in a rearranged game in Manchester City on the 16th here, which does make it a bit harder for them. But Palace have just got Michael Elise, they've just got Ebrichiesi coming back into fitness. Summer signing Matthias Franca, I think his name is, is starting to come into the team. And guys like Odson Edward, Tyrick Mitchell, they've got a really strong squad there. Sam Johnson here, as you can see, his goalkeeper scores. His peaks can reflect the same as Flecken's, but he's maybe had some, some worse games here or there. 
Joakim Anderson for me has been an absolute hero for Crystal Palace and points per pound on Soria. He is the best defender in the game. He does do very well for Denmark internationally as well, it must be said. But Crystal Palace are always going to be under the cosh defensively. They like to defend and he is a very good defender. But what makes him a bit different, makes him a bit special, is that he can actually play attacking passes to attacking players. And he does find himself in the box for attacking set pieces. So he's a real Swiss army knife of a centre-back for Soria Fantasy Football and in the Premier League. And like I mentioned, Ebri Chiesi is back in the building and when you couple these scores next to Joachim Anderson, Palace have potentially got a super strong spine here. And now that Michael Olise is back in situ as well, he only got a 29 off the bench, but we can see what he was like for Palace last season. You know, Mateta, Ayu, Edward, maybe you don't really fancy the strikers at Palace, but the defence and midfield options that they've got are elite. And over the fixtures they've got there, I would fancy each of these players individually to score very well. Bournemouth for a team that I struggle to get behind this season. Bournemouth for a team that I struggle to have belief in that will do well this year. But Andoni Iraola, he's starting to see some green shoots of progress coming through the club. I mean, you look at the fixture list for Bournemouth over this period of time here, I think a lot of their cards are going to be very cheap and very slept on. When we look at the fixtures, they do open against Sheffield United which is maybe favourable for the likes of Solanke maybe some of the guys that are on a bit of form recently but when you look at then playing Villa, Palace and Man United that will probably put a lot of people off using Bournemouth cards for the most part before the tournament finishes with Bournemouth playing Luton and Nottingham Forest which will be a tough fixture but I think Bournemouth have enough nice pieces in their squad that across all of these fixtures here could give you some options. Dominic Solanke of course hit huge in the last game week scoring 78 points but if we look across the season so far he is starting to get his act together he's a firm 60 or 35 forward so far and over those six or seven fixtures that they have you can expect that kind of form to replicate and that is a forward option that can work for you and be very good in the cap modes because his value is 45 a lot of the other very good players we've seen their value has been quite expensive so having a cheaper forward like a Solanke here might actually help the cap work a bit more I would say the same thing for Ryan Christie as well with his cap score only being 38 at the moment he's got a very good all-around score here he normally gets a lot of all-around actions uh, on top of his base score the thing that holds Christie back is he's not getting many decisive actions and if he can add a few decisives onto a few of these performances you'll see his scores become 70 and 80 quite quickly and a few of these fixtures that are coming up I could see Christie getting those kind of scores and for how cheap he is on the market and how cheap he is on the cap I think him Solanke and Philip Billing here, who has also an L15 of 49, could be very viable options. He's a bit similar to his scoring profile to Ryan Christie, but Billing has got a wee bit more. He's got, he's got some decisives recently in his locker and a wee bit higher AA. So he's maybe a wee bit more of a, a known quantity in that respect. But at 49, he's a wee bit more expensive. So, you, you know, you kind of pay for that in the cap. But from a sort of perspective, I really like Bournemouth's goalkeeper. The Brazilian Neto scores very, very well. His scoring profile looks very similar to Flecken, who I'm a big fan of as well. And across a lot of those matches that we see Bournemouth are entering, I think like a lot of Premier League teams, they are at the mercy of conceding three to some of the better, more attacking sides. But their goalkeeper is clearly able of making saves and, you know, keeping the score down if, you know, the, the shots are minimal enough, you know. So I really like Neto coming in here as a goalkeeper option. And then the fourth team I'd be looking at for fixtures here is Wolves. Now, Wolves start their campaign in this competition playing Fulham and Burnley before some harder games with uh, West Ham and Arsenal. And we see the Nottingham Forest game popped in there as well. So they've got overall, I think, actually some quite appealing fixtures. Uh, Pedro Neto, his injury isn't that bad. I think he might be back a wee bit sooner rather than later. I'm not sure if we'll get him back in this window. But Wolves under Gary O'Neill have started to get some really regular, consistent scorers. Again, I think I'd be wanting to make use of the goalkeeper. His scores at the moment don't look that good, and they're not, but I really like how low his cap score is as a result of that, and he is a very safe, capable goalkeeper, and if Wills do perform better and better, concede less and less goals, maybe he can score a few more points, but having his cap so cheap, I find Jose Sa very appealing. Now, Tote, or Tote, I think it's Tote, he's doing pretty well so far this season, and an L15 score of 38 as a centre-back, I think him, and Max Kilman are both very good low cap options, Max Kilman, as you can see here, is a wee bit more reliable, quite steady Eddie, high 50, low 60 player, which is fantastic. And similar to Palace, I really like Wolves' midfield, guys like Mario Lamina, Paolo Sarabia, Tommy Doyle, Bellegarde, a lot of these guys are very neutral to the fixture they have. It's just really about Wolves, how well they do. Can they get a goal or two? Can they actually express some dominance on the game? And a lot of these midfielders can score really, really well. And in attack, they have a lot of talent that you can rotate between and kind of pick your battles with. Huang Hee Chan and Cunha are clearly the two nailed-on ones at the moment with Kaladzinac, Fabio Silva, 
kind of rotating around them. Obviously, Neto's out injured at the moment. But I think between the forward options they've got as well, these four teams and the fixtures that they have, they've got the composite best three teams that you can build for me. So entry number one would look something like this. We'd go with Flecken, Anderson, Eze, Cunha and Jensen. And this team would come in just under £100. For entry number two, try and go a bit more gung-ho. We get Elise back in as captain, double striker in Buemo and Solanke, the main goal scorers for those, you know, for some of the teams that we featured. And then Neto and Pinnock, that kind of solid defensive option there, just to you know run and ride through the fixtures. And in the third entry, we could put out double attacker again with Edward and Huang, midfield of Billing and Kilman, because we know they're nice and solid and reliable. And then Jose Sa, hopefully he can put in a good goalkeeper performance. I think across all three of these entries here, we're able to cover some really good fixtures, offer some different tactics and strategies on the leaderboard and obviously we can intermix these lineups depending on the fixtures and depending on how things go throughout the competition there's still enough wiggle room throughout these teams that you can pick up some players that are really cheap to just enhance and you know double down on the collection bonus side of things if once you've bought a couple of players you realize that oh we're only one player away from getting into the next collection bonus percentage because this competition every point's a prisoner every percentage point matters so this is how I would attack the Premier League half a million dollar giveaway winter competition. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section. I'll be really interested to hear if you're competing, if you can use any of the strategy from this video to help your efforts to go and win some money. And ultimately, how do you think you're going to do over the competition? On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this one video. Good luck to everyone that's going to get stuck in to the Premier League competition. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.